now we are going to talk about bivariate normal distribution it is a very very helpful uh, and useful distribution it has been used in many many practical scenarios uh, so i thought that maybe we can discuss this the bivariate normal distribution uh, for some time okay so uh, before going into the definition of the bivariate normal distribution just uh, let us first recap the univariate normal distribution so uh, remember recall that uh, univariate normal distribution was a continuous distribution is a continuous distribution and its pdf is given by this expression uh, where the parameters mu belongs to r and sigma has to be greater than 0 and we use the notation that x follows normal with uh, mu and sigma square we have also seen that in this case the uh, all the moments exist all the moment of x exist all other moment of x exist in particular expectation of x and variance of x exist and we know that expectation of x is mu and variance of x is sigma square so that means that uh, that that uh, the, for the normal distribution the distribution is completely specified by its mean and variance because the parameters are basically mean and variance. So if I know the mean and variance of a uh, of a univariate normal distribution, I know the complete density function, complete probability density function. Okay, that means this uh, distribution is specified by the uh, mean and variance. Okay, so now uh, come to the definition of bivariate normal. So a two-dimensional random vector x consists of x1 and x2 is said to have a bivariate normal distribution if you take any linear combination of x1 and x2 that is a x1 plus b x2 this random this is a random variable and this random variable will have a univariate normal distribution okay so the density function of this random variable will be given by this one for some value of mu and sigma okay for some value of mu and sigma the density function of this can be written in this particular form Note that this a and b equals to 0, 0 is removed here because a and b both are 0, then this will be, con uh, this will be exactly equals to 0. Okay? So that's one, uh, that's why this part is removed. So if you take any non-zero non linear combination of the components, it will be a univariate normal uh, random variable. Univariate normal random variable, then we say that x, which is a consist of x1 and x2, is a bivariate normal distribution, normally distributed. Okay, so then the next theorem, which is a very straightforward from the definition, it says that if x has a bivariate normal distribution, then each component x1 and x2 is univariate normal. Why? Because uh, in the in the in the um, uh, this uh, combination, uh, if I take a equals to one, b equals to zero, I will go get this uh, this, this uh, linear combination is equals to x1. And then the definition says that uh, for a equals to 1, b equals to 0, that linear combination has to follow a univariate normal. That means x1 has to follow a univariate normal. Similarly, x2 has to follow a univariate normal that I can show by taking a equals to 0 and b equals to 1. Next, uh, because x1 is uniform, uh, sorry, x1 is uh, normal, that means the expectation and variance of x1 going to x. Similarly, x2 is normal, uh, univariate normal, so expectation of x2 and variance of x2 going to exist. What about covariance? The covariance is going to exist. The reason is nothing but in, in theorem 3.13, we have shown that the mode of covariance is less than or equal to root over variance of x1 into root over variance of x2. And now if x1 and variance of x1 and variance of x2 are finite, this quantity has to find out. So this, this, is, this is also going to exist. So in case of the bivariate normal random variable x, each components are in, each components are univariate normal and uh, and the mean variance of each component going to exist and covariance between both the component x1 and x2 going to exist. Okay, so let us give some name to this uh, expectation and variances. So mu1 is the expectation of x1 mu2 is the expectation of x2 then we make the vector mu which is expectation of x which consists of mu1 and mu2 then we give the name that x is the variance of x1 in sigma 1 1 variance of x2 is sigma 1 2 and covariance between x1 and x2 either we will write sigma 1 2 or sigma 2 1 because covariance between x1 and x2 is same as covariance between x2 and x1 okay so both of them we are going to do now i can write the variance covariance matrix of x 
which is basically consists of these elements this is the variance of x variance of y variance of x1 variance of x2 these two components are covariance between x1 and x2 so uh, with this notation so mu is basically expectation consists of mu1 mu2 sigma is a true cos true matrix con 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 consists of variance and covariance the diagonals are variance and of diagonals are covariance and uh, in this case uh, now we can show which is which is given in the theorem 3.27 that x if x is a bivariate normal random vector if the mu is expectation of x and sigma is variance of variance of x then u prime x will have a normal distribution with parameter u prime mu and mu prime sigma u okay u prime mu and u prime sigma u Now, uh, please say that zero zero is not again considered. Again, not considered because of uh, if you take u equals to zero, the linear combination is identically zero. That is a constant, so that that one we are we are removing from. How to prove? Prove is simple because by definition we know that u prime x has a univariate normal distribution. Okay, by definition of the bivariate normal uh, random variable, we know that u prime x has a uniform uni, univariate normal distribution. So now univariate normal distribution is completely specified by mean and variance so to find out these two parameters i need to find out what is the expectation of this random variable and what is the variance of this one so let us try to let us try to find out what is the expectation of this random variable so expectation of u prime x so u prime x is basically nothing but a x1 plus b x2 so this is basically expectation of a x1 plus b x2 and that is basically nothing but a times expectation of x1 plus b times expectation of x2 which turns out to be u, u prime mu now let us talk about the variance of uh, u prime x so again again if i if i so now i try to find out what is the what is the uh, variance what is the variance of uh, u prime x which is nothing but uh, variance of a1x1 plus we b x2 okay so this is nothing but a x1 and b x2 a x1 and b x2 so that basically mean that that basically mean that uh, it can be written as a times square times variance of x1 plus b square times variance of x2 plus 2 times a b covariance between x1 x2 right so that means basically it is nothing but a square sigma 1 1 b square sigma 2 2 plus 2 ab sigma 1 2 and notice that this quantity you can write as ab sigma sigma is basically sigma is basically nothing but the sigma 1 1 sigma 2 2 sigma 1 2 Sigma two one and then uh, a b. Okay, so that means it is nothing but u prime sigma u. So that that shows that basically that shows that I can I can I can I can find out the variance of u prime x as u prime uh, sigma u, and that actually shows that u prime x will have a normal distribution with parameter u prime mu and u prime sigma u. Okay, now this. Theorem give us the moment generating function from bivariate uh, normal distribution. So if x has a bivariate normal distribution with mu uh, expectation of x and sigma is variance covariance matrix of x, then the MGF of x given by the joint MGF of x is given by this quantity. Very easy to find out because uh, because notice that the joint MGF of x uh, x at the point t is nothing but the expectation of e to the power t prime x. It is t o one x one plus t two x two. So e to the power t prime x, and uh, you see that this one we know that t prime x has a uh, univariate normal distribution. T prime x has a univariate normal distribution. So this expectation is basically nothing but the moment generating function of the random variable t prime x at the point one. Now I will use that t prime x as a univariate normal distribution with parameter t prime mu and variance t prime sigma t, and I know what is the moment generating function of a normal random variable. So from that one. I can directly write that the moment generating the joint moment generating function of the random vector x bivariate random bivariate uh, uh, normal random variable x is given by e to the power t prime mu plus half t prime sigma t. Now we have we have pointed out that uh, 
the moment generating function uniquely uh, uniquely determine the distribution function because that that theorem we have seen that if two moment generating function are same then the distribution of two random variables are same okay from that one we can say that well the if, when if i specific if specify mu and sigma here that specify the distribution itself okay that specify the distribution itself because moment generating function uniquely identify the distribution and that means that for the bivariate normal distribution also mu which is the expectation of x and sigma which is the variance covariance matrix of x these two quantity uh, uniquely identify the bivariate normal distribution okay so bivariate normal distribution is completely specified uh, by its mean vector mu and variance covariance matrix sigma so that why we are going to use the notation that x follows n2 to identify it is a bivariate normal n2 uh, with parameter mu which is a 2 cross 1 vector and uh, uh, sigma which is a 2 cross 2 matrix okay now this next theorem shows that says that a, if x is a bivariate normal with mean uh, mean mu and variance covariance matrix sigma then x1 uh, is a bivariate is, is a normal univariate normal that we already know x2 is also normal that we also know but here the extra thing is given is that the parameter of uh, the, the, the parameter of x1 the parameter of the distribution of x1 is mu1 and sigma1 so expectation of x1 is mu1 and variance of x1 is sigma1 that we need to show and showing of this one is very very simple because the showing of this one is very very simple because because i can i can because 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 of this one because of this result see we, we uh, here if i take a equals to 1 b equals to 0 i get it is x1 so x1 has a distribution where where this a is 1 b is 0 so expectation will be mu 1 similarly in this case b is 0 b is 0 this part will not contribute a is 1 i am only left with sigma 1 so that's why basically we have straightforwardly we have that uh, x1 follows normal with mean mu1 and variance sigma1 similarly x2 follows normal with mean mu2 variance sigma2 okay uh, now natural question comes to the mind well if x follows bivariate normal then the components are normal uh, with, with parameter specified parameter natural questions come to the mind in the converse too that means if x1 and x2 are univariate normal does this imply that the x1 x2 as a vector is bivariate normal and the answer to this one is not 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 true and not true in general and we are given a counter example for that here and example may be goes like this that you take x follows a normal uh, distribution in standard normal distribution and j is another random variable which is a discrete random variable which is independent of x and the uh, and the distribution is given like that so probability j equals to one is half and probability j equals to minus one is also half so j can take two values one and minus one both having the probability half so now first of all what we are going to show is that y which is z x z times x z times x is basically again a normal zero one random relevant the intuitive idea is very simple what is z z is basically giving a sign z is basically giving a sign x is normal okay x is normal univariate normal and uh, normal zero one we know that the normal zero one is symmetric about g so now if i change the sign and i change the sign with probability half that basically means that again that uh, normal will remain normal that something from the positive side go to the negative side something from the negative side come to the positive side but that changing is occurring with probability half so half of them do not change the sign half of them are going to change the sign but when i do this one the final thing turns out to be again normal how can i can show it mathematically i can show it mathematically by using the uh, using the formula that conditional uh, probability cost or conditional expectation formula that probability x less than equals to y that means probability z x less than equals to y that i can write as uh, expectation of or 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 uh, because i i'll do the um, condition with respect to z z is discrete so it can be written as summation probability x z less than equals to y given z equals to z into probability z equals to z and uh, because z take two values one and minus one so i just write it explicitly here now what i am going to do is that well when z equals to 1 that means i can replace it with 1 
So the first part give me x is less than equals to y, given z equals to z, because x and z are independent, that will give me x is less than equals to small y. And this part, because z is equals to minus 1, so that means minus x is less than equals to y, that means x is greater than equals to minus 1. Okay, and probability of z equals to 1, z equals to minus 1, both of them are half. And now because x follows normal and uh, the density, the power and, and x is a, and, 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 and the density function of a univariate normal, so univariate normal 0, 1 random variable is metric about 0. That's why uh, these two quantities are going to give me the same thing. Just add them up, I get that it turns out to be capital at the point y. So that means the cumulative distribution function of y is same as the cumulative distribution function of x, which is normal 0, 1. So that means x and y have the same cumulative distribution function and they have the same distribution. Clear? Yeah? So now x, so x has uniform normal 0, 1, y has normal 0, 1 distribution. Now the question is that is x comma y as a vector has a bivariate normal distribution or not? And the answer to this one is no. Why no? The reason is very simple. See, I, if I talk about x plus y, this is a linear combination of x plus y, taking a equals to 1, b equals to 1. So definitely, x plus y have to have a nor, uh, univariate normal distribution if x plus x, x if uh, this vector has a bivariate normal distribution. Now, I am going to basically show that this does not have a, x plus y does not have a univariate normal distribution. Why? Because just try to find out the probability x plus y equals to 0 x plus y equals to 0, that means that x plus zy equals to 0, and this will be 0 if and only if z equals to 1, z equals to minus 1, right? So that means this probability is same as z equals to minus 1, which is half. So if x plus y is normal, universe normal, we know that the normal is a continuous random, continuous distribution, so probability of x plus y equals to 0 has to be 0. But here the x plus y equals to 0, the probability x plus y equals to 0 is not equals to 0, it is equals to half, not equals to 0. That means x plus y do not have a, do not have a uh, univariate normal distribution. And that implies that x comma y as a vector do not have a bivariate normal distribution, even though x and y both have the normal distribution. Okay, so this example shows that uh, x and y univariate normal does not imply x, y as a vector is a invariant normal. Okay, so next theorem will give us a very, very interesting property of a bivariate normal. See, we have already pointed out that if I have two random variable x and y, and uh, uh, if these two random variable are independent, then the covariance is true. But the convert is not in general true. Bivariate normal is one of such distribution, one of the distribution where the converse is also true. That means that if this has a bivariate normal distribution such that the covariance is zero, covariance between x1 and x2 are zero, then x1 and x2 are independent. Note that it is very, very specific to the bivariate normal distribution. It is not in general true, which we have shown using, uh, using a, one example previously. Okay, so bivariate normal is very, very uh, specific in this case that if I can show that if I have a bivariate normal distribution and if I can show that uh, both the components has covariance zero or correlation zero, that basically give us that uh, both the components are independent. How can we prove that? The proof is very simple from the moment generating function. Note that when covariance is zero, that means sigma matrix is a diagonal matrix diagonal matrix that because of diagonal quantities are covariant, so these two are zero, so sigma matrix is diagonal matrix and diagonal elements are sigma 1, sigma 2. Now, you can easily check that in this case, the, the moment generating function of x1, x2, moment generating joint moment generating function of x1, x2, uh, that means joint moment generating function of x at the point t1, t2 can be written into the product form into uh, one of the component is this one and another component is this one. Now, what is the first quantity? First quantity is nothing but the moment generating function of the normal distribution. Uh, the parameters are mu1 and sigma11. One one. So that means the first quantity is basically nothing but the moment generating function of x1 and the second quantity is nothing but the moment generating function of x2. That means the joint moment generating function of x1, x2 can be written as the product of the marginal moment generating function. That means that x1 and x2 are independent. Okay. 
So, as I already mentioned, that this is a very specific property of the bivariate normal distribution that if covariance is zero, this implies that x1 and x2 are independent. Again, I am putting it that it is not in general true, it is only for the, it is true for the bivariate normal. Okay, now uh, we talk about many things that well, uh, it is it is uh, by the definition of the bivariate normal and all such things. Now, one important thing here is that see that a bivariate normal is a continuous distribution if the sigma matrix is a invertible matrix. That means if the sigma matrix is a PD matrix, then uh, a by then then the um, bivariate normal distribution have a joint PDF and the joint PDF is given by this. The proof I cannot go uh, give here because this is a quite lengthy proof. It is not very difficult one, but quite lengthy proof. That's why I just read this proof. Okay. So, uh, so uh, in this case, it can be given in this form, and uh, uh, and also if, if you take the pro write the pro take the inverse do the product, it can be written in this form also. Here, this row or this row is basically correlation coefficient between x1 and x2. And sigma one and sigma two are the positive square root of sigma one one and sigma two two respectively. Okay, so uh, in uh, so so keep in mind that sigma needs to be invertible. If sigma is not invertible, then you do not have a joint PDF. If sigma is not invertible, then you do not have a joint PDF. If sigma is invertible, it has a joint PDF, and joint PDF is given by this particular expression. And when the joint PDF exists, that means sigma is invertible. I can find out the uh, conditional uh, PDF also, conditional PDF of x1 given x1, x2 equals to x2 and if you find it out, you will see that this turns out to be this. And finding out it is that from the basic definition that we know the joint density function, we know the marginal density function because x2 follow a normal, normal random variable, x2 is a normal random variable, you just write this one, simplify it, obviously you have to do some algebra, after doing this algebra you can write this one of this form where mu1 given 2 is given by this expression sigma 1 given 2 is given by this expression. Now you see that this one is the density function of a univariate normal distribution. So that means that when sigma is invertible matrix, then x1 given x2 equals to x2 has a univariate normal distribution with mean mu 1 2, mu 1 given 2 and variance sigma 1 given 2 square. Okay, so x1 given x2 follows normal, uh, normal with mean, uh, mean uh, this, this particular expression and variance uh, of this expression. So that means that, uh, okay, that means that, uh, well, that was, it is written here that expectation of x1 given x1 equals to x2 is basically mu1 given 2 and variance is sigma square 1 given 2. And notice that interesting part that variance does not depend on x2. So the mean depends on x2, x2 is involved there, but the, in the variance there is no x2 involved there. So whatever the value of x2 you take here in the real line, uh, this remains constant. This remains constant. Okay, with that I just stop here. In the next lecture, we will see some more property of the uh, by the, of the independent and identically distributed uh, normal random variable.